getting herself arrested <laughs> is in the audience and uh, so we in this session we're going to be speaking about fabricating the war and terror lessons from Africa so I think I'm going to spend about 20 minutes taking you through how I understand some of the challenges of the peace movement at this particular historical conjuncture and how it is that those who are committed towards a new form of human organization can generate the kind of thinking, the kind of organization, and the kind of activity that can lay the foundations for changing this society. First, I want to say that the peace movement is challenged at the moment because the information warfare against US citizens I reached the point where many cannot understand and fully grasp the nature of the period we're in. And I want to focus on Africa because in the way information is presented about Africa, we have simultaneously the destruction of lives in Africa and psychological warfare against US citizens. So actually, the principal war on terror right now is against US citizens. And the US citizens are suffering even more than Africans from this war on terror. And the peace movement, I would like to say, to uh, be able to clarify for themselves what they mean by peace at this moment. The press has been putting out a lot of information which I consider to be disinformation about the so-called terror threat from Africa. And if you follow in the media, you will uh, hear that there, is, there are terrorists in Africa and in the past, Three months, you've heard about the French military intervention in Mali, and you'd have heard about France trying to save Mali from terrorists. So that is one major front where we've been given information about terrorism in Africa. The second is about Boko Haram which is supposed to be a terrorist organization that is marauding the Nigerian society. And the Boko Haram is supposed to be a terrorist organization that ultimately threatens the United States of America. Thirdly, we have the media presenting information about Somalia, and that there's an organization called Al-Shabaab. 
And Al-Shabaab is a dangerous terrorist organization. And these terrorists will threaten the United States of America. Then we hear of the Eastern DRC. Now, here we have four instances in a continent of a billion persons in 54 different countries. And the way the media represents what's going on in these four countries is that all of Africa is under threat. And so you will hear from the Washington Post, someone called Craig Woodlock has written numerous articles about this terror threat from Africa. Nick Terse, who is supposed to be writing from a progressive point of view, has been writing about this expanded war on terror. And even Jeremy Cahill, when you hear his presentation on Africa, you wonder if the information that is being presented is not consistent with the way the United States military wants to create the idea that there is this great terror threat from Africa. And so what the peace movement has to ask itself, what is happening in the rest of Africa in the other 54 countries? What is the situation in Eastern DRC? Well, this requires a level of engagement with peace movements and peace organizations in other parts of the world. What has happened in Somalia since 1992? Why is it that for 21 years, the United States is supposed to be trying to bring peace into Somalia? And I can tell you that we are at a point in East Africa where the East Africans will contain that situation. And it is the private military contractors, it is the Central Intelligence Agency and the so-called humanitarian agencies that have an interest in perpetuating terrorism in Somalia. Then the third case, Boko Haram. I'm going to say a bit more about Boko Haram, but let me introduce the problem there. This is one case where we have an alliance between the Salafists in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, and in Kuwait, in alliance with Israel and the Central Intelligence Agency that has created the problem. So it's not an African problem. And in the case of Mali, I want to say that the Mali intervention, in my view, by France, was an attempt by France to intervene in the debate inside the United States between those elements of the Obama administration that want to end the war and terror and those elements of the Obama administration that want to con continue the war and terror. And that is the struggle between the Petraeus wing of the Pentagon and those who I would call the rocks and the crusaders. So what I'm saying is that the peace movement has to have a higher level of understanding of global contradictions and how these contradictions fit into the present economic crisis globally. What is the significance of that economic crisis globally? The governor of the Bank of England says that this crisis is worse than the crisis of 1930s. What they have not told you is the, is the depth of this capitalist depression. Let us ask ourselves, if this capitalist depression is worse than 1930, what are we to expect out of this depression? Let us remind ourselves what happened in the last depression. In the last depression, we had a capitalist crisis we had the crisis of the capitalist class accumulating capital. Then we had the competition between different capitalists, German, French, British, US, Japanese capitalists. And that competition between these different branches of capital resulted in 
trade wars, currency wars, competitive devaluations, financial wars, until we had actual fighting. And that depression started the militarism in the Italian invasion of Abyssinia in 1935, which laid the basis for World War II. If we do not remember the triggers for war that came out of that depression, we are in the midst of another depression without understanding all of those forces that are leading to the militarization of the planet and the destruction of citizens here. So, what is the response of the peace movement to this war and terror? Well, the peace movement, and I, I'm, I'm sad to say that the so-called humanitarian instincts that is promoted by the Central Intelligence Agency and the military has engulfed sections of the peace movement to the point that they have been silenced when it comes to Africa. And I want to use two examples. The first example is in the case of Uganda, where the Central Intelligence Agency and the CIA and the military created this video called Kony 2012. The video Kony 2012 was psychological warfare by the United States military against the young people of the United States of America for them to sign up to support US military intervention in Africa under the guise of catching Kony. When in fact, if the peace movement has been doing its work about what's going on in Africa, they would understand that what was going on in Uganda was that it was the Uganda government that was perpetuating the war in the north, and what should have been done was that peace movement should be isolating the Museveni government. Instead, through the Institute of Creative Technologies at the University of South California, they created this video and had 100 million young people sign up on this thing called Kony 2012. And up to now, the established peace movement has said nothing. In other words, we are asleep at the wheel when this intensified militarization is going on. The second example I want to give is the continued silence of the peace movement on the war against the people of Libya. I've just finished the book on Libya. It came out yesterday. Monthly Review Press. It's called Global NATO and the Catastrophic Failure in Libya. What was the position of the peace movement on Libya then? What's the position of the peace movement on Libya now? Here is a situation where the United States was fighting a war against terrorism, and the so-called terrorists that were in Guantanamo Bay, the United States went and armed those terrorists, overthrew the Gaddafi regime, and unleashed 1,700 militias to destabilize Libya. That was not enough. You executed Gaddafi paraded him and humiliated him in an attempt to humiliate Africa. And then the ambassador of the United States of America is caught up with militias that he is himself involved in, and then he dies in the middle of this. Where is the peace movement? When the CIA operatives who are working as video game actions actors within the military infrastructure, when they are killed, those who call themselves liberals are saying, oh, this guy was just there doing video games. Sean Smith. Why are we here? Not hear anything from the peace movement of this. And then, Petraeus. Petraeus, as we now know, from Paula Broadwell, was running a secret prison in Benghazi 
and Petraeus with the secret prison in Benghazi was recruiting these same terrorists to fight in Syria and Petraeus and Clinton and sections of the Pentagon was fighting with Obama over how to continue this war in Syria. And now Petraeus, he was going to stand up to Obama because as they thought they were going to win the election and that this information would not come out. That they were making decisions about moving troops to Libya to fight in Benghazi. And Hillary Clinton, who was involved in all of this, she couldn't talk about it. She sent um, Susan Rice before the cameras to speak. And then she herself cannot deal with this question. Where are we in the peace movement? As the Libyan fallout continues now so that France is intervening to help the Petraeus wing of the military inside the United States because the Obama administration said that the war and terror is over and we should now be using legal and police means to pursue this war and terror instead of using military means. And since that time, the press, the media said, no, the war and terror is not over because Africa is a hotbed of terrorism. Africa is a place where we have Boko Haram, we have the Salafis, we have Al-Shabaab, and we must increase the military budget. And, and Jake Johnson, who gave this speech to say the war and terror is over, is out of the Pentagon. And we only hear about these struggles going on in the administration when you have congressional hearings. When at the last hearing, that um, when Panetta was going out, they asked Panetta, is it true that you from the Pentagon, the CIA, and Clinton agreed to support the Salafists in Syria, but Obama overruled you? He said, yes, it's true. He said, well, Obama is too powerful. He's not supporting this war and terror in Africa that we want. So where are we in the peace movement about these struggles? Well, as I said to Judy Bella when she invited me here, and my sister here who gets arrested, it's important for us to talk about drones. <laughs> but what about the new business model for supporting militarism in Africa. Let us look at that business model. The business model said that for the United States to remain competitive in this capitalist depression, the United States must fight a war in Ch against China. And that war against China must begin with triggers of war. And those triggers of war just as we talked about the depression in 1935, those triggers of war will start with skirmishes in Syria, Iran, and then those triggers will get out of control. And so in Africa, the job is to stimulate skirmishes to perpetuate the US military contractors so that this idea that there is a war and terror going on is kept before the minds of the American people. Moreover, the United States does not have the capability to fight wars anymore. Let me repeat this. The United States has not fought a serious war since 1952. The major war that the United States fought was in Vietnam and they lost. And since that time, they have to find a methodology of warfare which will relieve the United States citizens from mobilizing against the military. And what is that methodology of warfare? That methodology of warfare is one which includes sophisticated weaponry such as drones, private military contractors, third party countries, and mercenaries. This methodology of warfare is what they use in Afghanistan and what they use in Iraq. And what it has done, it even among the military personnel and the U and the private contractors, 
that has created even more trauma inside of the military. And so, I'm suggesting to the peace movement, our job is to intensify our work in the military to break the military between those who want to support Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, and those who want to dismantle the military. Those who do not believe that we should go to war with China. And so, that means that we should be calling for the dismantling of the United States Africa Command. What is the United States Africa Command? The United States Africa Command is the new command structure that has been established to fight terrorism in Africa because we have this terrorist threat. Mind you, I started out by telling you that there's a billion people in Africa and there are these four pockets. And I'm saying to you that the peace movement, that the terrorist threat in Africa is coming from Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. And that is not where we're focusing our work in terms of demilitarization. So those sections of the US military that are opposed to the private military contractors and the debasing of the United States foreign policy, that is where we should be focusing our work, to divide the United States military. Because there was a moment in the history of the United States when the United States military was an army of liberation. That happened in the Civil War when the army was divided in two. Is there a possibility in this capitalist crisis that we can call on the military to say, your job is not to defend Goldman Sachs and Sir Rivers? Because the military model today is one where the private military contractors are owned by the banks. And know that the war in Afghanistan has been discredited. The war in Iraq has been discredited. Those million or half a million contractors need jobs. And the jobs that they are getting is private military contracting to stimulate warfare in Africa. <coughs> and the stimulation of warfare in Africa, we are documenting what they are doing. Something like DynCorp is now owned by Cerebrus. So DynCorp is a private military contracting firm owned by one of the Wall Street firms. So that the military is no longer responsive to an elected government. So our job is to speak to the military and say, do you want that? To have these private contractors doing this. So this is the challenge I want to put before the Peace Council. I want to put before the peace movement, are you going to be an agent of the psychological warfare against Africans in the sense that you're turning your back against the war against yourselves by accepting this view of humanitarian support for Africa, which is based on racism. It is based on the idea that Europeans can go to help Africa. And it is this racism in the this peace movement which disqualifies the moral authority from subsection of the peace movement to go forward at this moment because you cannot be fighting against US militarism in Afghanistan when this militarism is in your own community where you live. You cannot separate militarism abroad from militarism at home. The two are interconnected. So I'm just saying that the challenge for us of the peace movement at the moment is for us to have a level of literacy so that our understanding of the conjuncture does not bring us to support the Pentagon in Coney 2012 and have our children sign on to say we must go to help catch Coney. I have so much more to say, but I'm going to stop there so I can give room for discussion because I have put out a lot in terms of what I'm saying.